Welcome into the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm Scott Bernstein. Quick hitter edition. I want to talk about uh, some cross pollination, if you will, uh, in the East Coast Mafia between the New York Gambino crime family and the guys in Philly, the Bruno Scarfo clan, um, and some subtext from both the Gambino's racketeering bust out of New York last week, as well as a uh, uh, another. Uh, indictment out of Philadelphia earlier this year. It deals with the LaForte brothers, uh, Joe LaForte and his brother, Jimmy LaForte. Um, Jimmy LaForte, they're both in jail right now, uh, awaiting trial. Uh, Jimmy LaForte was uh, taken down in the Gambino bus, one of Penn uh, Gambinos that were arrested on racketeering charges last week. And then Joe LaForte has been in prison since the spring. Uh, Joe LaForte was the CEO, uh, chief operating officer of PAR Funding. And PAR Funding was, for lack of a, a, a better description, legalized, legalized loan sharking. Um, they found some loopholes and uh, got into a, a, a space of the lending business that's called um, merchant cash advances. And, you know, if, you, if you're... Um, a business that is having struggling to make payroll or like what was happening during the uh, the COVID pandemic where uh, there was all this downsizing and, and gushing, um, you know, hemorrhaging capital. Uh, these were the type of places that some people had to go to. And these are the type of places that are charging uh, up to 40% interest on these loans that are legal loans. And they are, dispatching mafia-like tactics in collecting. If you are uh, fall behind on your payments, PAR funding was sending a goon squad literally around the country to physically attack, uh, intimidate, and threaten um, people that had taken money out. It's alleged in this uh, fraud case that, that came down uh, targeting PAR funding recently, uh, Earlier in 2023, it's a case out of Pennsylvania, and um, both Joe and, and Jimmy Lafort are tied into that case. And then Jimmy Lafort, Jimmy Laforte just got uh, brought in to the case, uh, just the strictly the Gambino case. But uh, they have a very interesting mafia lineage. Their grandfather was Joe the Cat Laforte, who was a staple um, in the. Uh, Carlo Gambino and then the John Gotti regime. He was very, very close to uh, Neil Deli Croce, who was a, a mentor to John Gotti. He was a huge earner, one of the big, biggest earners in, in the Gambinos of that era, owned a lot of real estate. A lot of the real estate uh, was in Manhattan, uh, Mulberry Street. He owned a big chunks of, of what was Little Italy, or it still is Little Italy, but it was a bigger version of it back then, uh, owned the property that. Uh, housed the Ravenite Social Club, which was uh, Mr. Neal's for a long time, and then transitioned to to one of Gotti's headquarters when he was uh, on top of the mafia in New York. And, and Joe the Cat was a um, very respected guy who... I, I need to do a little bit more research on this in reporting, but uh, I've heard that once Neal died, he didn't get along with Gotti as, as much as he had didn't. Uh, when he had Neil as, as a buffer um, that uh, him and Gotti sometimes butted heads. Nonetheless, he was a capital regime in the Gambinos for decades. Uh, these two, Joe and, and Jimmy Laforte, are his son, Buddy Laforte, who was also a maid guy, not a capo, but these are Buddy's sons. And Joe lives in Philadelphia. Jimmy, uh, I believe, lives in New York, but comes to Philadelphia quite often, and they're both charged with some real nasty, nasty um, offenses when it comes to, again, intimidation tactics and just overall thuggish behavior. Uh, Jimmy Laforte is allegedly a made guy. We know that from court filings. He, he's 
making ceremony, according to this most recent indictment, uh, took place in October of 2019. Joe Laforte was named as an associate of the Gambino crime family in his most recent bust. I'm told he's a made guy. So I, I guess the government right now isn't doesn't feel comfortable enough to say that, but I'm told that they're both made guys in the Gambino crime family. So th what I kind of want to discuss for a very uh, brief uh, brief period of time here and just you know give some food for thought, but you know the subtext of this, in my mind at least, and, it, and it's been subtext that I've um, been talking to people about and pondering and researching since the par funding um, fraud indictment that came down. And then it, it, it popped back up in my mind uh, last week when the Gambino case um, landed. How is this or how could this ricochet on the Joe Merlino, Joe Legambi, Georgie Borghese group, um, the leaders of the Bruno Scarfo crime family, this par funding is operating in the middle of Philadelphia. Um, I know that there are some very high ranking members of the Philadelphia mafia who had relatives that were working there at, at, at certain points. I know that there are members of the Philadelphia mafia that have been seen coming and going out of uh, par funding uh, over the last handful of years. And I would be remiss if I didn't ask some questions. And what I, I answer myself, which is, how could the Gambinos be operating in Philadelphia without sharing a part of those operation um, profits with the, the Philadelphia Mafia? And according to the government, the PAR funding people collected half billion dollars in uh, fraudulent profits. Um, they're in the process of trying to pay back at least a quarter of a billion to uh, people that were defrauded. But that's a lot of money. And I just don't find it possible that they could be making that much money in the middle of Philadelphia and not sharing um, with the Bruno Scarfo crime family. So it leads me to extrapolate that even further that the Laforte brothers not only uh, have the potential to harm the Gambinos, they also potentially have um, the ability to, to harm the guys in Philly. And I, I, I want to say that I have no inclination whatsoever. I've never, uh, I haven't heard, I have no uh, reporting or uh, haven't been told by anybody that the Laforte brothers are considering flipping. I, they're, they're known as, as stand-up guys, tough guys. Um, and and true to the code, I'm just saying they're looking right now, if convicted of that, uh, at, at a nice chunk of time. And now you got people in New York City looking for bodies. Again, I'm not connecting the Laforte to those bodies, but you can connect the bodies that they're or the potential bodies that the FBI is looking for in New York to the Gambino bus that Jimmy Laforte is right in the middle of. I don't know what kind of ammunition the, the feds would have to jam up the Laforte brothers, but just like if I'm in New York right now and uh, if I'm Lorenzo Menino or, or, or Italian Dom Shefalu, I ain't sleeping well tonight because they're digging for bodies up uh, in the Hudson Valley. Over the last couple of months in Philadelphia, I just, I don't know. Again, I don't know. I don't have, I haven't heard this. I don't know if they're thinking this, but if it was me, um, and, and I was uh, Uncle Joe Legambi or Georgie Ward Borghese, Joey Merlino out in Florida, who claims he has nothing to do with the Philadelphia mob uh, anymore, despite what the government claims. Um, I might be a little bit worried about what's going on over at PAR funding and the fact that one of the principals in, in the PAR funding case just got roped into another case uh, regarding racketeering and acts of violence. Um, you know, someone told me that uh, Joe, the, Joe the Cat wasn't a guy that was known um, as a tough guy, wasn't known for violence. He was an earner. Uh, they said Jimmy, his his grandson, They said, someone said to me, they called Joe the Cat. They called Jimmy the Leopard. He's a much more dangerous cat than than his than his grandpa was. And and Joe uh, Laforte, who who is the, the lead defendant in the part funding case, um, they call him Joe Mack. 
um, not to be confused with his dad, Buddy, or his grandpa, Joe the Cat. But, uh, and Joe Mack is another guy that um, can hold his own and, and, and can be quite um, imposing. And uh, I think there were a lot of people, according to the government, that felt threatened. So we should see, but it's just kind of an interesting uh, subplot, I think, to what's been going on uh, with the, the par funding case and the case in the Gambinos. Keep an eye on what's going on with the Laforte brothers. Uh, I will always be updating you on the on the most uh, pressing breaking news uh, in the organized crime landscape around the country. Uh, this is a quick evolving story. I, I, it's fluid. Uh, things are changing every day. Um, but I, I will keep you updated on the OG pod, on gangsterreport.com, everything that's going on in New York City with the Gambinos right now, uh, as well as the PAR funding case out of Philadelphia. OG pod, I'm Scott Bernstein. Out. Mm-hmm.